you know, I would probably like inhale most of the antifreeze because the heater was not working. So what would happen was that not only would the frost be on the outside of the windows, it would be on the inside of the windows as well. So I'd end up like inhaling a lot of it, you know, and my mother who would sometimes go with me would just like yell the entire way there and yell the entire way back she'd be like are you insane do you know how dangerous this is do you know how dangerous you're driving you cannot see a single thing and my only response to her would be mola i leave it to ali i leave it to ali because i'm going for them to the husseinias i'm going for them i'm going for his son you know i'm going for him I'm going for the Ahlul Bayt. And he will take me there and he will bring me back. And whatever happens on the way is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and so I leave it to Ali. I would go to the Husseiniyat like that, frost covering the window. I would scrape some of it off and then some of it will come back by the time I'd end up there. You know, and I spent Muharram like, like that. You know, I spent some of Muharram like that. In the end, the radiator was was sorted and the heater was all sorted and whatnot. But you know, I just left it to him. And I would say to my mother, I would say to her, you know, leave it to Ali. He will he will sort it. You know, he will sort your matter out. Trust him. You know, Alhamdulillah. And I would go there. It was as if I was going there blind. I couldn't see where I was going. You know, and Ali was leading me there. Because I leave the rope of my life in his hands. You know, wherever he takes me, I'll go. I'm uh, blind. I am blind and I have no tongue and I have no mouth. I cannot speak against his wish. Wherever he'll take me, I will go. And Alhamdulillah, you know, it, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing to even say his name. It's an amazing thing to even recognize the infallibles because my sinful tongue is not worthy. You know, I am a shameful sinner. You know, when I read the Imam, you know, signing his letter as the guilty sinner, it makes me so disgusted with myself because I think to myself, Ahmad al Hassan. You're saying this about yourself, you know, and who am I? I am much, 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 much worse. You know, I'm not even worthy to say your name, you know, and guilty sinner, you're calling yourself a guilty sinner, then what am I? You know, it just makes you think the humility, the the humbleness of the Ahlul Bayt just completely, completely blows you away. But we have to ask, we have to beg at this door, we have to beg them, we have to beg the Ahlul Bayt, you know, we have to realize that if we don't always get what we want, it is for, it is for us, it is for, there's a secret in that, you know, you beg, but you might not always get something straight away. It might take a few more tries. It might take like a few more days, a few more months, you know, maybe even years. But in the end, your prayers will be answered. Beg at their door. They will intercede for you. Just know how to ask. You know, just know how to ask. Practice asking the Ahlul Bayt. Ask them. They will answer you. <laughs> ما عجب تزهر الأرض وانت ساكن ثراها ما عجب يختم في القمر من تنور Many years ago, there was a great marja. I don't want to mention his name. He goes to Karbala. As he walks in through the haram, he sits there. He's a marja of the Shia, the Shia, he represents it. He sees that there's a young man who comes in with his mother. His mother's paralyzed, his mother's about to die. Brings in this body. He looks at the body. He looks at the child. He says, young man, why have you come here? Why don't you do something? Why don't you get some money together? Let me give you some khums. Get ready. Your mother's about to leave you. All of those things which you need to bury her, I'm willing to give them to you. You know what the young man says? He says, you're a marja of the Shia and you're giving me this? 
advice. If this was the case, I would never have come to the shrine of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. The fact is that I've come to his shrine. The whole purpose I've come to his shrine is because I know Shifa is found within him, within his shrine. This marja says, fine, he says, I saw the belief in this young man. I didn't want to say anything to him. I sat down. I knew this woman was going to die, but I looked at the belief in his face. He says, I sat down and I started listening to this young man converse. He says, the conversation of this young man was happening, having with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, he says, it was heartbreaking. I was thinking to myself, this young man really must be rude. You know what he was saying? He was saying, Abbas, cure my mother. He's ordering him. He says, cure my mother. And then you know what happens. She doesn't get up. So you know what he says. He says, you better cure my mother. If you don't cure my mother, I'm going to stand up right now and go to Najaf and to complain to your father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. He stands up and he begins to go towards Najaf. It says in the history, it says he begins to go. As he begins to go, this marja is sitting there. He sees that the body starts shaking and this woman stands up and she says, where is my son? He's absolutely gobsmacked. This young man is moving. As he goes to the boundary of Karbala, he sees that there is a person on a horse. This person on a horse comes to this man. He says to him, why don't you turn back, young man? Go back, know that your mother has been cured. He says, how do you know my mother has been cured? I'm going to Najaf to complain to Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. You know what this man says on a horse? He says, look, if you don't go back, if you don't see that your mother is cured, and if she isn't cured, I myself will take you on my horse and take you towards Najaf. He says, who are you says don't worry about that why don't you get on my horse I'll take you to your mother when you see your mother if you don't if you're not satisfied then I'll take you directly you know what it says in the narration it says that he goes he goes towards her he looks and he sees that his mother is walking again his mother is walking again. he says to the man he says I want to shake your hand and thank you this man replies he says I don't have any arms and after that he disappears you know the difference between him and us they know how to ask we don't know how to ask. Everything that you want, you can get from the door of Ahlul Bayt. The Hindu got it. Why can't we get it? Why? Because we don't know how to ask. Learn the techniques. How do you ask? When you learn how to ask, then you'll get. Because know that they are those people who are giving. Don't ever lose faith in them. Alhamdulillah. Now we have a special recording from Sister Labaik Ahmed, who speaks about the month of Shaban and its many blessings, and in relation to Imam Ahmed Al Hassan Alayhi Salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Al Imam Al Mahdi Nawaz Salam Tasima. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, my voice is reaching you while you're in good health and faith. Inshallah, I am Labaik Ahmed. And we are on the HSR show today talking about the 12th Imam, the Mahdi Ali Salam, as we are in the month of Shaban. And on the 5th of Shaban, it is the ceremony of the birth of our Imam, the Hujjah of our time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, What remains with Allah is better for you if you are believers. So the birth of the Imam alayhi salam, Imam Muhammad ibn al-Hassan al-Askari, the 12th divine leader of Islam. He was born on the dawn of the Friday of 15th of Shaban, 255 al-Hijra, correspondent to the 868 Miladi, in the house of the 12th Imam alayhi salam, in the city of Samarra, which is in Iraq. His honorable father is Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam, and his modest mother was the daughter of Kaiser's son, Joshua, and from the generation of Samaun, one of the Jesus apostles. She was so preferable that Imam Hassan's daughter called her the mistress of herself and her family. Hakima herself was one of the noble ladies of her time, but still she called herself Nargis's servant, as the mother of the Mahdi Ali Salam's name is Nargis and his father's name is Imam Hassan al Askar. He is almost 1150 years old and his life will last as much as Allah wishes. As a promise, it is mentioned frankly in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And certainly we wrote in the book after the reminder that the land, my righteous servants, shall inherit the earth. Islam will become an international religion and other religions will disappear. 
Also in the Holy Quran, it is written that one of the relics of his holy existence is above point. It is he who sent his apostle with guidance and the true religion, that he may make it overcome all of the religions, though the polytheists may be reluctant. It means that he sent this religion with his messenger Muhammad وسلم, in order to overcome all other religions and eventually all the people will obey. The Prophet وسلم, said, Allah will send one of my family to overcome injustice and cruelty through justice even if one day was left for the word. Another narration from the Prophet وسلم, said, Resurrection will not happen until a man from my household will govern the word whose name is as mine. Also Imam Ali السلام, says, In fact the word is never deprived of a hujja, either obvious and known hujja or a hujja who is hidden from the people's eyes waiting for a savior in other religions. In many religions, there is an expectation for a savior to come and help the release from injustice. In Islam, it is Mahdawiya, which has a great international philosophy, because Islam is an international religion, and Shia, in its real meaning, is an international factor. In addition to the Muslims, especially the Shia followers of other religions like Jews, Christians, Zoroastrians, and Hindus accept some to come and bring peace and justice to the world. It is mentioned in the book Dead, which is a divine book for Hindus. It is written that in the end of the world, after corruption of the world, a leader will appear who is called Mansur. He will master all the world. He will know everyone, whether a believer or unbeliever, and whatever he asks, God will offer him. Mentioned in Bishatrat Ahdin, page 245. Also, in addition, in the book Yamasib by Zoroaster's student, it is written From Arab's ground, Hashem's sons, a man with a big head, big body, and big feet, comes out and continues his grandfather's religion with a large army, goes to Iran and constructs the earths and fills the earth with justice. Also in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and I will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he bigot, and I will make him a great nation. Also in uh, David's Mazamir or Zabur it is written and God will approve the pious men who will become owners of the earth and will settle in it forever and in the Holy Quran it is mentioned and certainly we wrote in the book after the reminder that as for the land my righteous servants shall inherit the earth so the expectations and waiting for Imam Mahdi a.s. has a longer story than Islam. It does not only relate to a specific race or region or religion. Also in the Quran it is said, <laughs> Well, I'm a